we've got all kind of platforms, networks, websites, apps that, that say they're going to connect us more. But I think we all learned during the pandemic that there is no substitute for face-to-face -face human connection. I mean, during the pandemic, I stood up here and preached to an empty room for weeks. And one of the most fun things that ever happened to me is when you guys started coming back and I could look at faces again. Over those, we were only closed like two months. Those two months, I thought I was going to die. We need human connection. We need deep connections with other people if we're going to make it. Now, to get the answer to this, how do we actually find those? You won't be surprised. We're going to the Bible, which has the answers for our lives. We're going back to the very beginning of the Christian church. The very start of the Christian church is in the book of Acts chapter 2, where 120 men and women met in the church and met in a room together. And God birthed the worldwide Christian church with 120 people. Think about that for a minute. Look around this room and the Christian church that is now all over the world that has had impact on the world, untold impact all over the world, started in a room much smaller than this one with far fewer people than are in this room today. And they got together and prayed. The Bible says don't despise small beginnings because when the power of the Holy Spirit comes into a situation, it doesn't matter how few people are involved. It can be an avalanche of power that can change the world. So the Christian church started with 120 people praying in a room together. And it did not take long for them to grow. That very first day after the power of the Holy Spirit was manifest in that room, they went out of that room and they went from 120 people to 3,120 people in one day. People say, I don't want the church to get too big. Well, we're not out to build a mega church. But I'll tell you this, as long as there's somebody out in our community that doesn't know Jesus Christ, we need to keep growing. So the church went from 120 to a mega church in one day. 3,120, multiplied by 25 times in one day. If our church, I mean, our church is growing pretty fast, but if our church grew like that, I don't know what I would do. One of the first things you've got to deal with is you've got this big bunch of people and nobody knows each other anymore, and you've got all these new people coming in, and you've got to figure out how to plug those people in community because without community, there is no growth. You don't grow based on hearing me preach it's a wonderful thing. If you take what I say and what the Word says and apply it to your life, you'll grow. But you really only grow as you connect with other people in relationships and get discipled. Jesus never said build big churches. He said go out and make disciples. And that's one at a time. How do you deal with it? What do you do? Well, if we want to have the power that the early church had. I mean, they had power. Thousands of people saved in one day. The early church, this is what happened in the early church. They would go out walking around. It says this of Peter. He would go walking down the street, and when his shadow would touch people, they would get healed of their diseases. So people were laying their sick friends and relatives out on the street just so one of these Christians could walk by them. How many of you would like it in your life and in my life if we could just walk into a restaurant to eat and our server get touched by Jesus Christ just by virtue of the Holy Spirit's power in us. Amen. And I, I just got a feeling that if you're at Upward this morning, you still believe like we do that that's still possible. That the New Testament church power can still exist in our lives. In fact, should exist in our lives. I want to give you a statement. I want you to remember this. If we want New Testament power, we should follow New Testament practice. If we want the same power they had, maybe we should start doing some of the same things that they did. In fact, we should. I want to talk quickly today about four practices of the New Testament church that they started from the very beginning to build community in their growing congregation 
and to change the world around them. Four practices they had that you and I need to have in our lives. Would you stand with me? We're going to look in the book of Acts chapter 2 and verse 42, and we're going to read the Word of God together. We stand in honor of His Word, and we read it because speaking the Word is the best thing you can do. You ready? And they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and the fellowship to the breaking of bread and the prayers. There's the four things right there. Let's read it one more time. And they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and the prayers. May God bless the reading, the hearing, and the application of His Word this morning. You can be seated now. Four practices that the New Testament practiced on a regular basis. It says they devoted themselves. They made this a habit. Four habits they had, and four things you need in your life. Number one, they learned together. They learned together. Bible says clearly they started out with this. The early church gathered around the apostles' teaching. It said they began to practice studying and learning the things that the apostles taught from the very beginning. What are the apostles? They did a quiz recently in a, 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 a primary school, and they asked a question of the kids, what are the epistles and the, they said the predominant answer was the epistles are the wives of the apostles. <laughs> I find that funny. The epistles are actually letters written in the New Testament. But uh, I'm going to tell you who the apostles are. The apostles are 12 that were selected by Jesus, handpicked by Jesus, that he spent time with and sent them out to minister. And these 12 have a special calling in church history. Now, I believe... And we believe it upward that there's still apostolic gifts in the world today, that God still raises up apostles. We do not believe they're on the same level as these 12. These were foundational apostles who were given special revelation to give foundational doctrine and belief to the church. And the Bible says that the early church revered these apostles. They didn't worship them, but they understood they were called to teach doctrine to the church and they were very serious about studying the apostles' doctrine. Now, some people say, doctrine's boring. I'd rather have experiences than doctrine. Well, I'm all about experiences. Any of you got an experience with Jesus in your life? Anybody, anybody ever been touched by the power of God and just have a powerful experience with Jesus? Let me tell you. We're, we're Pentecostal in belief. We believe in the Holy Spirit and His power in the church today. We don't believe all that passed away. We believe God still wants the power of the New Testament church be in the church today, right? And that's a good thing. Say, say that's a good thing. Well, let me tell you, we need doctrine. Because if we're not careful, we'll make a doctrine out of our experience. And you cannot take an experience and make a doctrine out of it you must let solid doctrine guide and govern your experience. Because if your experience doesn't match up with what the doctrine says, what the Bible says, your experience is off. Can I get an amen? amen. I had a guy tell me one time, I've had a vision, and God wants me to marry another lady in the church. Problem was, he was already married to another lady in the church. I've had a vision of this very spiritual lady, and she just loves Jesus so much, God's called me to marry her. Nope. God didn't tell you that. Who are you to say what God can tell me? Well, the apostles' teaching. It's called the Bible. You don't get a vision from God to just up and marry somebody else. Can I get an amen? amen. If it's making you mad, I'm okay with that. Doctrine matters. What we're trying to understand, though, today is they learned together. Can I ask you a question? Who are you learning with? Now, I'm going to say a couple things that I really believe. When you stop learning, you stop growing. And when you stop growing, you start dying. I went to Bible college. When I went to Bible college, there was a lady studying the same class as I was taking, and she was 85 years old. I'm going to be that person. 
I'm going to be in a class somewhere where I'm, when I'm 80 years old because I don't ever want to stop learning. But a, an important question is, are you learning? If not, you need to get and, and begin to study and begin to learn. But who are you doing it with? Because the with is so important. They devoted themselves to the apostles. The best way to put that in modern language is they studied the Bible together. Are you studying the Bible with anybody else? Now, it may be the first thing you need to do is develop a consistent habit in your life of reading the Bible. If you're a Christian and you're endeavoring to follow Jesus Christ, there is no substitute for opening your Bible and reading the Word of God on a regular basis. (laughs) 